Well, welcome back to the big boy. Uh, let's see. Operation Star from the Kharkov Battles module. Uh, it's an interesting module for a number of reasons, but I want to just drill in here and have a little bit of a chat about the victory conditions for the Operation Star scenario and try and keep this relatively succinct. Uh, so let's do that by first pulling up victory conditions and checking them out and then looking at what the situation is for both sides in terms of where they need to get to, what they need to do to win and all the rest of it. So we've got orientation north, south. Uh, well, I guess this is actually, yeah, south is down here. So anyway, north, south, uh, east, west, but, uh, Soviets are approaching here. We've got Kharkov here for reference. We've got uh, the Dnieper River down here. This is the Donets. Uh, Stalino down out of frame just here. And then top side, I'm trying to find a town we might know. So if you've played Ukraine 43 or Stalingrad 42, you'll know that Belograd, Belgorod actually is here. And where's a town I can pronounce? Izium is here. So the game starts 1st of Feb and it's going to be a 16 turn scenario by the looks of it. And the objective is to push for the Soviets is to push the uh, access player from this defensive line where they've already made a uh, couple of breaches here and then press them all back behind the Nepa, right? And whoa, and there goes that damn stand. One of these days I'll buy some real equipment, but hey, no ads, you get what you get. Uh, <laughs> so that's, that's the goal. Right? That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to push, push the bad guys out of uh, Russia. Now, the uh, victory conditions, the quick way to win, the auto victory conditions are pretty straightforward. We need to capture Kharkov, uh, which is worth 20 VPs, which is also at a freaking frame. So let's just move the camera just a tad. There we go, right here. And uh, I can't pronounce this uh, city, but it's, it's Nepropetrovsk, something along those lines. Then uh, Zaporozhev over here probably is what it's called. Stalino down south here. Or Poltava, which is up north. Uh, where is Poltava? Over here. Uh, so quite a stretch. And actually, I'll let you see. Stalino is all the way, all the way down here in very tough terrain, right? Uh, now, it, it's conceivable that that's possible. Uh, quite a distance to crack. Uh, you can see this this little river junction here provides some interesting opportunities and it's also clear terrain, clear of enemy units at the moment. In fact, I need to check placement because I think that guy might have got bumped when I was moving things around. But big ask, right? Now, an auto victory can also be had by the Germans if at any point, don't even need to be in supply, they can capture Veliluki here, right? Now... Uh, that's a, a huge ask, is, is my guess. Now, if neither of those events occur, then we're looking at a straight VP count on... Uh, there are regiment losses for mechanized regiments, which is really going to hit, uh, really going to ding the Germans heavily. But then there's VPs in each of these towns, and they have different colors. And I... I'm not yet familiar with what the different colors represent or why they matter. And I'm also not 100% clear that we count all the towns. So for instance, uh, Sumi here uh, is worth five VPs. Now I can probably let that guy go for five, uh, but uh, Belogorod here is worth five. That's a key junction. I can see that's valuable. But if our goal is to deny an auto victory, we want to keep uh, the, the Nepa River line solid. So we need to have enough surviving troops to push, to, to fall back on here. The Soviets need to find an opportunity and a means, given that on turn one, they get some pretty significant reinforcements. Uh, 
a means to push through these two breakthrough areas that we have one here coming into some rough terrain there uh they're starting to bust a little hole here but these are all pretty light units without a lot of uh, supporting you know there's a lot of units that have bumped <laughs> um <clears throat> someone i must have knocked this at some point this is right at the edge of the room so it gets a lot of foot traffic uh there's a gap here there's potential for for a gap here as well Soviets are really going to need to be careful and thoughtful about supply and they're going to need to be careful and thoughtful about, you know, taking advantage of these roads and, and whatnot. Uh, obviously, any opportunity to cross the Donuts quickly or loop around would be highly advantageous. Now, I do also believe that some reinforcements, I've got to check the entry areas. Yeah, I'm going to have to check the entry areas that some may actually come in from the northeast side of the map as well. Uh, there is a nifty little rule uh, down here. This off-map front line, there has to be uh, pretty much at all times on this eastern edge, there has to be a unit with a zone of control. It's basically how I read it. There needs to be a front line marker somewhere along here uh, representing a linkage to what's going on off the map to the south. Uh, so that's that's key. So anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. I'm getting ready to start turn zero. So we start with the Soviet turn first. They'll get to conduct their activities. And then we'll move to a full regular turn where the Germans go first and the Soviets go second. And we'll kind of run things from there. Enjoying the uh, quality of the map artwork. Enjoying the thickness of the counters. The nice and robust but they're also thin enough that we can put them inside our clipper and clip them and they've been clipping nicely the artwork is clear and concise but my only minor pet peeve is because if you want to say the exact unit where's one for example it's so like some of these are a little a little challenging to read uh if you're looking for the actual unit designation that 7p on the side here seventh panzer pretty challenging to read that at at a distance. Everything else is great. You know, um, I have not necessarily placed every single unit in exactly where they historically started, particularly with the Soviets because there's so many, but I have kept them color coordinated. So the formations themselves are together uh, so that they all make sense when we go through this activation cycle and stuff like that, because there's a command phase here where we've got to have uh, units in, in command range and things like that uh, based on these HQs that you can see here that are on, on the map. But we'll get into some of the mechanics later on if it's necessary. Pretty straightforward game. If you play Fall Blau, you'll be able to play this. And if you played pretty much any SBI game that uses the Victory in the West system, you'll be pretty comfortable straight off the bat. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. Ciao.